Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're returning to the topic of the Psalms and their meaning. Now, a brief disclaimer before getting into this psalm. The Psalms will be numbered differently in different translations of the Bible. This is a very, very old discrepancy, and to help clear things up, I'll be explaining what number the psalm has in the Dewey Rames Bible and in the Revised Standard Version. However, the episodes themselves will list psalm numbers as they're given in the Dewey Rames Bible. Sorry if this is confusing. Anyway, this is Psalm 35 in the Dewey Rames Bible, but Psalm 36 in the RSV. Unto the end, for the servant of God, David himself. Brief description of the purpose of the psalm. The unjust hath said within himself that he would sin. There is no fear of God before his eyes. Evil people plan to sin with full knowledge and intent. When the sin is grave, we call that a mortal sin. They only do this because they're not at all worried about offending God or about the consequences of their sinfulness. For in his sight he hath done deceitfully, that his iniquity may be found unto hatred. The words of his mouth are iniquity and guile. He would not understand that he might do well. Evildoers sometimes even lie to God's face because they don't understand his plan for them, so they think they hate it. He hath devised iniquity on his bed. He hath set himself on every way that is not good, but evil he hath not hated. Some evildoers plan to commit evil actions, even when they're alone, opposing the will of God, but not hating evil as they should. This is worth mentioning because while many people do bad things partly because of hard circumstances and peer pressure, there are some people who have no such excuse. O Lord, thy mercy is in heaven, and thy truth reacheth even to the clouds. Heaven is the truest form of the mercy of God, allowing people to escape the suffering of this life for a life of happiness and fulfillment in eternity. His truth is everywhere, since all truths are God's truths. In fact, Jesus said he is the truth. Thy justice is as the mountains of God. Thy judgments are a great deep. Men and beasts thou wilt preserve, O Lord. No matter how hard you push with your arms, you can never move a mountain. In the same way, the justice of God is utterly immovable and inevitable, something that can never be avoided or undermined. All we can do is seek the mercy of God, so that his justice redeems and vindicates us, instead of condemning us as mortal sinners. O oh, how hast thou multiplied thy mercy, O God! But the children of men shall put their trust under the covert of thy wings. No one is more merciful or more trustworthy than God. People who trust his mercy have made the right choice. They shall be inebriated with the plenty of thy house, and thou shalt make them drink of the torrent of thy pleasure. The good things that God makes which give him delight will also give us delight to an overflowing degree in heaven. For with thee is the fountain of life, and in thy light we shall see light. God will illuminate our minds, allowing us to appreciate the good things he gives us, because all life comes from him. Also, remember the Hebrew word for life implies not just continued existence and the ability to breathe, but also anything that makes life better. Therefore, this is another way of saying that everything that's good and delightful comes from God. Extend thy mercy to them that know thee, and thy justice to them that are right in heart. Those who are trying to be close to God and do his will shall receive his mercy to forgive them and his justice to protect them, either in this life also or only in the next. Either way, God seeks to provide these things for us forever. Let not the foot of pride come to me, and let not the hand of the sinner move me. I don't want to be sidetracked by pridefulness or misled into evil by sinners. There the workers of iniquity are fallen. They are cast out and could not stand. People who fall victim to pride or evil peer pressure end up worse off, with God turning away from them and not hearing their prayers. As with the last psalm, this one is primarily a psalm of petition, requesting one of the most important things that anyone can request, that God will protect us from falling into sin and forgetting to do his will. After all, our whole future eternity depends on that. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.